We're moments away from starting the second semi-final of the 33rd Iolani Classic. The number two Kahuku Red Raiders ranked second in the scoring live power rankings, taking on the 2012 Iolani Classic champion, Finley Prep Pilots. We welcome you courtside with the Iolani head coach, Dean Shimamoto. I'm Josh Pacheco. This is a nice story here for Kuhuku. This is the first team to make it to a semifinal in the Iolani Classic since 2006. How have they done it? They've just been playing good basketball. They got some really talented guys, potentially three D1 level guys on that Kahuku team there. And you don't see that too often in Hawaii basketball where you have that level of talent and they have it this year. You've got a lot of talent on the Finley prep side as well. Starting with Justin Roberts, who's committed to DePaul coming off of a 13 point effort against Iolani in their last matchup. We got the lineups being introduced, including Roberts right now pj washington starting as a six foot nine forward uh you've also got uh Levine dion a six six senior forward donnie tillman a six seven senior and reggie cheney a six eight junior for first year head coach paul washington getting an opportunity to coach a couple of his sons pj washington who signed with kentucky and also uh, the junior spencer washington kahuku let's give you the line is for head coach Brandon Akana, Josiah Vila, the six foot senior guard, along with Kessie Ahoy, the six foot senior, Daniel Fotu, the younger brother of Isaac Fotu, a six eight junior. And then you talk about the guys up front, some of the guys that have that great talent, including Sabuta Avea, the six six senior, he's committed to the University of Hawaii, and another senior in Taimoto Wright, a six foot four senior wearing number 42 for Brandon Akana's squad. You think of the story with Kuhuku, everything that went on early in the 2015-2016 season with Kuhuku. Brandon Akana eventually would take over that program. A great run toward the end of that season and a fantastic 8-2 and two start for the Red Raiders this year. Really talented team. Uh, not much left from the previous year. Most of their talent is new to the team this year. Josiah Villa transferring over from West Virginia. Daniel Fotu coming from New Zealand and Samuta Avea moving back from Utah. So uh, it's a new team for this Kuhuku team, but they've really put it together and they've been playing some great basketball. The question is, do they have the firepower to stay with a national power like Finley Prep? This is another level. You know, when you see Southwind playing against some normal teams and then Oak Hill, that's another level. Finley is the same thing here. They're the next level of team. Not only are they long and athletic, but they play good basketball also. Come out really physical, they compete. So tall order for Kahuku, but they've been playing great this whole tournament, so let's see what they got. Donovan Lewis is our referee, working alongside Tony Colazzo and Ryan Wells as we are going the nightcap, and the tip is controlled by Finley Prep, and an early one-handed dunk from P.J. Washington. Nice play off the tip. Looked like they had that scripted, and they got a nice finish by P.J. Washington. Kahuku finding numbers the other way. That three is an air ball from Samuta Avea, and P.J. Washington will bring it back ahead for Finley Prep. Roberts for three. Good. What a start for the Pilots. Five points in 25 seconds. Scary. Scary. And they're keeping the pace fresh and quick. There is a turnover as Fotu loses it, but it'll go out of bounds. Last touched by Finley Prep. It will go back to Kahuku. I'm not sure that the Red Raiders were either expecting or ready for the pace to be this frenetic. Usually when you see a team that's this talented, they don't come out and play this hard. We experienced it last night when uh, Finley came out and just blitzed us, played physical like they were playing a championship game, even against us, who they beat by 60. So they're not lacking for effort. Avea to the rim, that's not good. But he will go to the free throw line on the first foul against 6'7 senior Donnie Tillman. Good to see Avea be aggressive there. Get to the hole, get to the free throw line for some easy opportunities. Avea coming off of a double-double last night against De La Salle in the 56-51 win. And Kahuku's on the board. Key for Kahuku last night too, I mean, they got everybody involved in, in that win. That's going to be key for Kahuku tonight. That's been the great thing about Kahuku. The guys have been doing their roles. You know, scorers have been scoring. Big guys have been blocking shots. The guys that have been coming off of the football team. 
Kessie Ahoy and Saval have been football type guys making hustle plays. Roberts trying to thread the needle, getting that to Dion, but it's through his hands and out of bounds in the first or second Finley prep turnover. And full court pressure put on very early on. Really trying to get Kahuku out of the pace it liked to be in. Out of bounds. Villa's pass knocked out. Bill Villa, who of course is the uh, athletic director at Chaminade University, the, uh, the grandfather of Josiah Villa. He's in attendance. He's wearing red, not his customary Chaminade blue. Is, that's out of bounds. Back to Finley Prep. Josiah Villa has been incredible these last two nights playing here at the Classic. But I think you may be able to see the difference here playing against a Finley Prep. Travel called against Dion before the shot attempt. And it does help with Villa. He played in this event last year. And seeing how packed this is, I mean, it is a whole different experience having that experience playing this event before here as there's a turnover. Washington the steal of the basket for Dion. Having that experience has to be almost gold to a certain degree. That's valuable experience for your team. Yeah, coming here and I think playing a lot in the mainland, getting used to the speed and the athleticism and the bumps and the bangs, I think he's more seasoned than most that are used to playing against Hawaii competition. So you saw him thrive against great teams like Mount Vernon and again last night against De La Salle. Fouls again, six foot senior Justin Roberts as the inbound into Daniel Fotu making his first start of the year. Bill is dry, that's blocked out of bounds. Kahuku will keep possession, shot clocks at 29, 624 in a quick paced first quarter. I like to see Kahuku attacking. They're not scared to go to the rim and create some contact. I think they saw, found some success in the last couple nights and they're doing it again here. Knocked out of Wright's hands by Washington. He'll stay with Kahuku. You mentioned it right at the outset talking about the Red Raiders. The makeup of a team that you don't normally see with the size. I mean, the Hawaii High School Athletics, uh, especially on the basketball side, as a Vea step back is good from the right wing. Oh, great crossover move, created some separation, then rose high for that high release jumper and finished it. And an offensive foul will go against Cheney, extending the arm to try to create space. I was trying to finish the point. With, with high school boys basketball in Hawaii, you don't see a lot of size. Usually your center might be about 6'2". If you're lucky, you get to 6'3", 6'4". Kahuku's got a real luxury with the size that it has that could take him a long way. I think it's an unusual year in Hawaii basketball. We have a 6'9 center here. They have a 6'8", 6'9", center forward. Lob up to the rim is over Tillman's head and out of bounds. Wild put in a way the last minute's been a bit sloppy. I think both teams kind of feeling each other out here. They're trying to see what they can get. Play through some bumps and bangs a little bit and I think they'll settle in pretty soon. Inbound goes into Avea. And Kahuku numbers ahead, Fotu underneath. Blocked from behind by Tillman. And it will stay with the Red Raiders. As we were mentioning with Oak Hill, it's that recovery. You can get by that first wave, but they're still coming and they're gonna pin your ball on the backboard or get another block coming on the backside. We'll get it into a hole, a quick trigger, that's short. Rebound to the Pilots. Finley Prep doesn't have numbers, so this is like the, the equivalent of a slow, slow move into the offensive zone, but it's lost out of bounds by Roberts in a turnover. Love Ahoy, so tough. You see him do great things on the football field, and he kind of brings that mentality here. Hard nose, doesn't give up a thing. Even though he was beat, he kept coming and was able to knock that one out of bounds. Chris Giles into the game for the first time. A six foot three senior came over to this prep program from a Plano West High School there in Texas. As Avea holding it for Kahuku. Tries to get it to right, will recover in the corner. Avea. With two guys in front of him, that three no good. It goes over the backboard and will be Finley prep ball. Nice to have a 6'6 long guy that's able to create his own shot. Because you really don't see too many holes against Finley. So for him to create some separation, that's helpful for the Kuku offense. That's part of what you see out of a Division I prospect like Avea is. What else do you see in him that makes him that Division I caliber? I think he's a really hungry kid. You know, I don't think he's ever really satisfied with where he's at and always trying to get better. 
Washington was challenged the first time. Cheney with a second chance is bumped on his way up. He'll head to the charity stripe on the foul, which is called against Daniel Fotu. Speaking of Division One, got to see before this game members of the Utah Utes basketball team making their way inside this very packed and cramped lower campus gymnasium where you want to talk about standing room only, forget that. That free throw's no good. You look along the baseline and our cameras will catch it from time to time as that's thrown away over the head of Villa. You look toward our left and you see people just kind of kneeling down right toward the uh, the black colored portion of the baseline out of bounds here on the floor. That's how cramped this place is right well, now. What you don't understand is that they stopped selling tickets and there's 200 people outside watching the live feed outside. That's right. Three ball no good for Washington. Rebound for Villa. Up ahead, Fotu, tough pass, uh, touch pass through the hands of Ahoy. It will stay with Kahuku, who was last touched by a pilot. So Kahuku ball with 30 on the shot clock. Apparently, these people do not want to watch the live feed outside. I hope it's not us. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Villa inbound. Looks in, finds Simona Wright. Loses the basketball. Great defense from Cheney. Ball's going to go out of bounds back to Kuhuku. This defense from Finley Prep out of the perimeter has been tenacious. Yeah, with these teams, you know, the Oak Hill from the last game and Finley, they, they're so long, they're so athletic. Even when you see an opening, it's not that open, and you have to be perfect with what you're doing. And we get a foul underneath as they were looking in to Fotu, and he is going to be called with a bit of a grab against Cheney. That's Fotu's second already here in quarter number one, and that's going to be early trouble. Yeah, they really need his length on both both ends, obviously on the defensive end and rebounding, but he also is a mismatch problem, uh, matchup problem on the offensive end. Carrying against P.J. Washington. And outside of the first couple possessions where Finley Prep just kind of raced to good opportunities, they've had some real careless possessions like that one. Yeah, if Kuku can find their way on offense, this would be a, a decent game if they can manage to keep the turnovers down and keep down the easy buckets. Red Raiders break the press, and Ahoy is fouled as he slashes to the rim. That's on Chris Giles. That's a good thing you like to see, these guys getting to the free throw line. You don't have to deal with 6'8", six, 6'9", six, when you're shooting free throws. First free throw barely gets the front rim. It's no good. I'd like to see him take a little bit more time here. You know, it's going to be a, a long game against this, these types of guys. So if he can take some time and, and rest just a little bit, even though it's early, I think that'll be helpful in the long run. The way that Finley Prep has put its pressure on and has forced Kuhuku to run, can Kuhuku play at this kind of pace as the second one's good? They really thrived against Mount Vernon against that type of pace the entire game. I'm not sure if against Finley they'll be able to have that type of success because of their length. P.J. Washington no good with the putback there from Dion. Definitely like to see him try. They may have no choice, right? As that's brought up ahead, almost out of the hands of Ahoy, one-handed ahead to Salval and underneath. That's blocked, right rejected, but the ball poked free and right back to Kahuku, his bodies hit the deck. Corner three away, no good from Villa, and the rebound, quick out to Tillman and a hold on Dion. Finley Prep wants it intentional, they're not gonna get that, it's a foul on Kessie Ahoy. That's a great heady foul by Kessie Ahoy. He knows that if that one gets out, it's going to be a dunk or an easy basket, so he stopped it early at the half court. Paul Washington trying to make the case that that should have been an intentional foul. Should that have been? I don't think in that scenario, in the NBA, that would have been a clear path foul where they would have got a shot and, and the ball back, but I think that was a pretty fair, just heady, smart play. 10-5, Finley prep 323 left of the first quarter. Giles, the lob, the two-hand dunk missed by P.J. Washington. Back to Kahuku with possession. I think he was hanging up there so long, he, he got bored. Missed the dunk. Usually they say, kind of hang it up there long enough, you're able to get it at the apex. That's a good pass. Villa racing ahead, four on one, and a lay-in good for Cody Salvao. That's where Villa's at his best in the open court. 
Dion loses it, but he's fouled. They may get that on Avea. That's almost too tough when you're having to come back so quickly as Finley Prep wastes no time and you're trying to race to get back in position. You can't waste one second being happy about what you just did. You gotta get back. Inbound to P.J. Washington. Easy position against Avea and the two-hand flush. Working for that seal with a nice pass there to P.J. Washington. Kahuku with a nice job breaking that press and they'll get into a half court. Set here with 2.50 to go in period number one. Vila into the corner. Avea can't hit the three. Rebound. Washington will corral it. Gets the outlet to Spencer Washington. The lob off the mark for Tillman, but put back in by Lamine Dion. I think that's what you're seeing with Fultu getting into foul trouble. You're losing a bit on the defensive boards. Cuckoo's figured out this pressure, though. Can they get a clean opportunity, though, at the basket? Because Finley Prep races back on defense to keep Kahuku from getting clean numbers. Quick two from Villa, no good off the left rim. And Spencer Washington can't get the rebound. It's out of bounds. It will be Finley Prep ball. In the last few games, Josiah Villa's been able to get to the hole in the same way, but he's been able to finish. I think the length and the size that's back there makes it a little more difficult to get an easy bucket. Marcus Damuni in for Kuhuku, the 6'2 sophomore, in for the first time along the front line. Spencer Washington, three. No good. Damuni with the rebound. Red Raiders trailing by seven, under two to go in the first quarter. Villa contact made by Giles, and that will be Giles' second. Oh. Warning here from Ryan Wells to Samuta Avea. Dead ball, don't shoot the three after the whistle. I can't remember the last time Kahuku's gotten a clean look at the basket in this quarter. If, if one at all. They've gotten, some, they've gotten some off of uh, Villa's drives. But those have been few and far between. Villa with 22 to shoot, almost lost in the pain, kicks it out and turns it over. Look out for Dion, Lane's good. Lead up to nine for Finley Prep. So quickly the other way. Finley Prep's really just been playing at one speed. And it's been the right speed so far to start this game. Luke has been really wild trying to counteract that foul. Are they going to count the basket? They're going to say the ball's down. Foul on Giles before the shot. Josiah's Villa, Josiah Villa has been incredibly impressive over this entire tournament. Guys haven't been able to stay in front of him. He's been able to finish in the early games or be able to dish for an easy bucket or a wide open three. He's been the one creating all the action for Kahuku. Justin Roberts, the DePaul commit, selling back into the game. As Salval with it to the near side. Now back to Josiah Villa. 26 points, six assists last night. Avea, tough take to the rim, no good, but he'll get his own rebound off the tip. Tough put back, no good there. And P.J. Washington with another rebound. He's been active early on in this first quarter. He'll take it to the rim himself. Good in the harm. That's that length and versatility. Plays great defense on one end, pushes it all the way, pushes it all the way up the court in control, and gets the strong and one finish. He's signed with Kentucky, number 16 in the ESPN 100. You can see why with what he does with that six foot nine frame, misses the free throw. But what he does with that frame, not just the big guy who stays near the basket. Nice spin move from Villa. Salval can't get a an open look, but he'll get it back. Stopped at the baseline. Kahuku fans wanted Cody to shoot. And there are quite a few of them here inside this gym. Washington, PJ will get the foul there. I think that's the only downside for Finley at this point. They put Kahuku in the bonus. They got 17 fouls already. So they've been playing hard-nosed basketball, but Kahuku's gonna be able to get to the line for the rest of the half. And this is a good free throw shooting team that Brandon O'Connor has. So one and one for Villa. 
that goes. Quietly, by the way, Lamine Dion. Well, we've seen P.J. Washington do a lot of different things. Lamine Dion, 8 points, 4 of 4. For he, Finley Prep to lead, the, lead, uh, lead them early. He's been out, getting out in transition and then hitting the offensive boards for some easy buckets. 18-9, Finley Prep. They break a hookoo pressure. That ball goes out the foot of Roberts. Now Spencer Washington for his brother P.J. Look out! Timona Wright put on a poster with a two-hand jam. That's a P.J. Washington highlight right there. And a held ball with .5 on the clock. Possession arrow is going to give it to Kahuku. Guess that's why he's going to Kentucky. John Calipari likes guys who can star. Inbound to Villa, and that is the quarter. It has been a frenetic and fast first quarter led by Finley Prep. A 29 lead on Kuhuku. This is the Iolani Classic on Scoring Live. There you get a look at not just standing room only. How many people can you fit into a gym? We're getting the answer tonight as Kuhuku and Finley Prep get ready for the second quarter. 20 to nine, PJ Washington, Lamine Dion, eight apiece, pacing the pilots through quarter number one, partner. Finley Prep has just done it nice and slow and in control. You know, nothing flashy. Well, that was pretty flashy. That, that was pretty flashy. I take that back. <laughs> Roberts' pass knocked out of bounds. And Spencer Washington committed, committing a traveling violation there. Ball back to Kahuku. How does Kahuku counteract this? I think they tried, up, tried a little de different defense there, see if uh, they can test Finley's ability to shoot it from the outside. But they're still going to have to get some buckets. Villa racing to the rim. That is... Blocked on the way up, the foul before the shot. It's on Justin Roberts, it's his second. I think the other thing you can do is get Finley Prep in foul trouble, which is what Kuhuku is starting to do as Giles comes back in and Lamine Dion takes a seat. I haven't seen anyone stay in front of Josiah Villa this entire tournament. That includes Finley Prep. Front end of the one and one is good, it's 20 to 10. Does a really good job of making them pay every time he gets to the free throw line. Shoots it at a really high percentage. I think the big thing with Villa is that you can see him that calm, calm player there right at the free throw line. But once he knows he has to turn that gear, he does at the flip of a switch. Yeah, he plays with great speed, but he's able to stay in control and knock down, gear down, and finish or take the bumps. Giles penetrates, misses that, but the rebound falls in the hands of Donnie Tillman for the two-pointer. I think that's where you're seeing Fotu be out of the game. They're giving up some of those offensive rebounds. Tight rope with a sideline. That too no good for Marcus DeMuni. Rebound knocked out of bounds. That was last tipped by Giles, so Kahuku will get it back with a fresh 35 on the shot clock. Kahuku's doing a nice job of just scratching and clawing. They're just doing what they can to get an extra possession. Hand off to Avea. Hadn't touched the ball in a while. Back to Villa. Finds space. Underhands it underneath. <laughs> Lost by Demuni and taken away by Justin Roberts. P.J. Washington pull up. No good. And Stennett Alapa, the 6'2 senior, comes up with his first rebound. Changing up the defense, it seems to have gotten them a couple stops. They gave up an offensive board, but the initial basket isn't quite as easy as it was earlier. Double team on Villa. Into Demuni, baseline drive, nice handoff for Alapa, hesitating, drawing a crowd. He is hammered, gets the ball back, dishes off for Villa, who gets the two. Nice job by Alapa, just kind of kept working. Banging, bumping, and then made a great pass to Villa for the finish. Well, one thing with Stenin Lapa, you are not going to move him off his blocks. He is tough, and he will hold his ground. Giles, three. Swish. That's what Finley was waiting for. Not what Kuku wanted, but that's what Finley was waiting for. Ovea trying to get out of the pressure. Finds an open Demuni. And Kuku will get back into a half-court set. 
25-13. Finley Prep with 5.30 to go in the second quarter. Nice dish to Demuni. Almost lost the handle, he does, but hands it off to Alapa. Saves it in bounds. Almost out of bounds off of Giles, but he saves it. And Giles tells P.J. Washington, run, big man. Up ahead to Tillman, who will get the two. So good in transition. They just take what's there. Off the foot of Avea, that's another turnover, and Spencer Washington will finish. And all of a sudden, this is ballooned to a 16-point lead, and another turnover is Giles with the takeaway. Spencer Washington, long. And Kahuku with the run out, but an errant pass from Demuti will give the ball back to the Pilots. We'll see how long Coach Brandon O'Connor waits to put Fotu back in. A lot of these guys haven't gotten a lot of minutes in the last few nights with uh, Villa and Avail playing so many. So we'll see. We'll step away, 4.43 to go in the first half off a of Finley Prep timeout. This is the Elani Classic on Scoring Live. 4.43 left to go second quarter with Elani head coach Dean Shimamoto. I'm Josh Pacheco. Finley Prep racing ahead to a 29-13 lead on Kahuku. Interesting time out there by first year head coach Paul Washington for Finley Prep. I think seeing things getting a, a little bit wild and wanted to, to bring things back under control a little bit. Yeah, and I think it worked just as well for Coach Akana. He doesn't mind that little extra break, settle his guys down as well. So let's see what Coach Washington has coming out of the timeout. Kahuku in his zone. So get it into a low block. That two is no good. Rebound, P.J. Washington. He's fouled by Stendhalapa. I think the big question, and you asked it a moment ago, when do you think about bringing Daniel Fotu back in the game? On one hand, you don't want him to pick up his third, but it's starting to get away here in this first half, and you're losing out on some inside defense and some offensive rebounding, so a little bit of a gamble if they do bring him back, but they may need to sooner than later. That's in and out. One of, I think, maybe the bugaboos of this Finley prep team might be from the free throw line, in that win against Mid-Pacific, which was by 50, Back on their opening game, 89 to 39, they went six of 18 from the foul line. That would not get them into the free throw competition. <laughs> well, because they don't reside here, they wouldn't be eligible for that free throw competition, but the point valid. That ball slips free, and it's gonna be another turnover. Spencer Washington in trouble, gets it out for Roberts. Lane opens up, and Roberts gets the two to go. So quick, so shifty there. 32-13, Villa the other way with contact. Before the shot, that won't count. Fouls on Spencer Washington. And the many Kahuku fans, some true, some acquired, believing that that should have been a continuation. That one was pretty close. I thought he might have gone up with it as he took the bump or right after. But again, Josiah Villa doing an incredible job of getting to the hole and drawing contact and then knocking down free throws. It's the first of the one and one. Makes it 32-14. He's really been the one that has been able to handle the Finley prep pressure as he has hit both. He just hasn't led to a lot of open opportunities. There's a steal from Sabuta Avea, but he needs to get someone the ball. And he finds Cody Salvao. And now to Villa. They bring pressure to Villa. He drives, dishes underneath for a lot, but he's blocked underneath. Loose ball on the floor, and it will be a held ball. Possession arrow will give it to Kahuku, and they got to get a Lapa off of one of the Finley Prep players. And we got a technical foul. They had to get Stenid Lapa up off of Chris Giles. That's a big man there. That was looking like a wrestling match for a moment, and I'm not talking about the WWE kind, I'm talking about the more traditional. Got a little physical there, they both went to the floor. I think you see two guys competing, or two teams competing. Unfortunately, unfortunate that one had to pick up a technical foul. Well, let's see who the technical's gonna be on. They're gonna bring 
both coaches together. So it's Kahuku ball, double technical foul. Reading lips here, we know one is on Stenitalapa, and the other I believe they've given to Chris Giles. And watching the way Ryan Wells just interacted with Brandon Akana, he knows Brandon Akana's not too pleased with it. But at the same time, I mean, you don't like technical fouls, but you love heart and you love hustle. And sometimes when you're being outrun in a way, you love some physicality. You like it when your guys are fighting for the ball. You, you love it when they're fighting for their teammates on both ends. So hopefully that can be some type of spark for Kahuku. Obviously well known for their football success. That looked like a loose ball, a loose fumble or something out on the field. Question here on, or at least Finley Prep is questioning whether it should be Kahuku ball on the jump. That's because Finley Prep got it to start the quarter. Here's a turnover and a foul called against Demuni. Both teams now in the bonus. You may see the officials tighten up a little bit here just to keep the game from getting a little too physical or a little too out of hand with the tempers a little bit up from that last play. Kessie Ahoy back in the game replacing Damuni. P.J. Washington's had a really good first half. He'll shoot one in the bonus for Finley Prep. Front end is short. Rebound. Tapped around a few times and taken by Reggie Cheney. Roberts driving and before the shot an offensive foul. That's going to be Donnie Tillman second. Finley Prep arguing that it should have been two shots. There's an offensive foul there so they well, not take on, it out. Well not on the previous one but I think prior. 10 team fouls against Finley Prep. Fotu at the baseline, no good. Rebound tapped down and right back to Justin Roberts. Kahuku's getting some decent looks right now. He's yeah, not I was, able to convert. I was just gonna say, Josiah Villa's doing a nice job of getting by the first guy, creating some help. He's gonna have to have some of his guys help him out a little bit. Roberts can't hit the three at the left wing. Rebound to Samuta Avea. We're under three minutes to go and another Kahuku turnover. And numbers for Finley Prep. Roberts around and an open two-hand dunk for P.J. Washington. Every mistake they make you pay. Go out left side Ahoy. Jack Schweitz went down to the floor. Nice hesitation. Wright can't hit underneath. Schweitz the rebound. And he'll push ahead for Justin Roberts. Finley Prep is basically getting almost every rebound. Spencer Washington can't hit the three. Kessie Ahoy tracks down the rebound. He'll play football at the University of Hawaii. There is a near turnover. It's out of bounds. Knocked off of Reggie Cheney. You've seen it time and time again where you see Josiah Villa get past that first wave, make a great dump off, which would probably be a bucket against anybody else, but Finley is there to block the shot, grab the rebound, and then, and then turn it back into offense on the other side. Lamine Dion back in the game for Finley Prep. Kahuku trailing 34-15 at the two minute warning of the second quarter. Ahoy at the wing for three, too strong. But the offensive board goes to Samuta Avea. Vila wants one from distance, can't hit that. Washington with yet another rebound. PJ Washington's been doing everything. He throws it ahead for Cheney. Nice spin, and that's good off the bank. And a steal by Justin Roberts. But that's deflected and taken back by Kohuku. You look at the body control on a 6'8 guy coming at you at full speed, able to spin and get the finish. Paul Washington wanted a kick ball as it went off the foot of Josiah Villa. Instead, we get a foul on Spencer Washington on the penetration attempt by Daniel Fotu. Free throws have been keeping them in this game, you know, getting buckets. They haven't gotten much else other than the free throws in these last few possessions. I'd love to see at one point 
The field goal number for Kahuku is the first free throw is good. And it's 36-16. Kahuku trailing by 20. As we're late in the second quarter. Second one rolls in. Fotu, of course, in the game right now in foul trouble. And Finley Prep will slow it down, really for the first time, into the front court. Kuku back in the 2-3 zone. See him, this causes some disruption for Finley. Roberts with 16, pulls into a three, and hits. So many weapons they have. Able to get it in all different ways. 39-17, under a minute to go in half number one. Nice pass underneath, and right is blocked! Stuffed out of bounds by Chi. It'll stay with Kahuku. I want to say he was at the three-point line as that pass was going by his head and was able to recover and hit it off the backboard. It was a great pass to begin with. A, a bullet by Ahoy. Chaney with his third block. They're going to give the ball to Finley Prep. I've said it before, but that recovery speed, what looks open isn't that open. It's almost not human to a certain degree. I'd say that's unfair. <laughs> Roberts has it for Finley Prep. 11 second difference between game and shot clock. Washington, PJ3, yes. Lead up to 25 now with 24 seconds left in the first half. Pull up two, Fotu, no good. Rebound tap free at the baseline, another rebound, PJ Washington. And they'll work for one shot, crossing midcourt with 12 seconds. Roberts with two. Spencer Washington inside. Baseline Dion. No good at the buzzer. At the buzzer. And a dominant first half for Finley Prep. 42-17. The pilots had been soaring the first 16 minutes over the Red Raiders of Kuhuku. We'll step aside. We'll come back and look at what we've seen in the first half. Semi-final number two. The winner will take on Oak Hill. And right now. It's the Pilots, 42, the Red Raiders, 17. It's the Iolani Classic on Scoring Live. 42-17, Finley Prep has been rolling here through the first 16 minutes of the second semifinal of the Iolani Classic. Back with Iolani head coach Dean Shimamoto. I'm Josh Pacheco. Look at some of the dominant numbers from Finley Prep through the first 16 minutes of play. 18 of 31 from the floor. It is hard to lose when you're shooting at such a high percentage. They're just a good team. You know, usually a team that th that's this athletic, that th that's this long and this good, sometimes they get lazy and they just want dunks and they're trying to force things. But Finley Prep has done an exceptional job of just taking what Kahuku has given them. And if it was the three, they would take the three and hit it. If it was transition, they'd take the transition. If it was offensive rebounds, they'd go get it and finish it. So they've been getting it every which way. But the amazing thing about it is we talk about the flashiness and the high flying part of it, but the funny thing about it is, it almost makes you forget about the defense. The defense has been that good, and it's allowed a lot of that flashiness and fun to happen. Yeah, I mean, smothering, I would say is a good word for it. You know, they haven't been able to stay in front of Josiah Villa, but they've shut the door every time he's dished it. Uh, maybe the fouls on their end might be something to talk about at halftime, but... For the most part, they played great defense. They've taken what was given to them on offense, and it was a good half for them. Kahuku, three of 23, shooting in the first half, 13%, 15 turnovers, eight in the second quarter. We want to talk about highlight players here in the first half. P.J. Washington's been that guy. I think he's on his way to a potential double-double. I mean, he's had two of them in this tournament already, 14 points, seven rebounds, and if he's having fun with his teammates, he could mess around with a triple-double as well because he's got four dimes. Yeah, he's very versatile. You see him on the backside of that defense, grabbing the rebound, pushing it up. If the lane's there, he takes it. If he has one of his teammates open, he finds them, and then he crashes the offensive board. So just like the rest of the team, he's getting it every which way as well. If you're Brandon Akano, what are you telling Kahuku right now in the locker room before you head back into this packed gymnasium? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they tried just about everything. They tried different lineups. They went to the zone and 
Finley came out and hit a couple threes. They played the man, and they're giving up some dunks. They played different people, giving up offensive rebounds. You know, they've, they've gotten by guys, you know, early. Josiah Villa's been doing what he's been doing. Guys are getting some decent opportunities and looks. But I don't know what you tell them, you know, do a better job of making shots or don't let the 6'9 guy block you or, you know, it's not things that are easy to explain or easy to adjust to. They're that good. You almost kind of want to reassure them to a certain degree saying, I mean, hey, they're doing really well. Don't get discouraged. I know your effort is there. You almost kind of want to just kind of lift them back up to a certain extent. Yeah, I mean, we were there last night. It was it was 21-0 before we scored a point, but there was really not much to adjust. I mean, even calling a timeout would be just to give our guys rest and say, hey, just keep trying, you know, keep doing what you do. And, and that became the message. Just continue to work on what we do, see how well we can do it against probably the best competition you'll go against this season, and see where you stand up. So. I think it's just a test, it's a gauge, and it's an opportunity to get better, as every coach wants, for Kahuku. Oak Hill's still here. They're watching to see who they're going to get as uh, some of those guys walk up right to the Finley players, coming right back onto the floor, ready for the second half. We'll come back in a moment with the second half. It is 42-17, Finley Prep with a commanding lead over Kahuku. This is the Iolani Classic, and you're watching it on Scoring Live. Back here at Iolani School, 42-17, Finley Prep leading Kahuku. Coming up on February 17th, part of the Great Aloha Sports Health and Fitness Expo at the Neil Blaisdell Exhibition Hall. It is the first annual Scoring Live Free Throw Championship. 16 boys and girls teams in a bracketed single elimination tournament. The winning two-person team will get the Scoring Live trophy and $500 each for their schools. All you need to do, finish in the top 16 of the season-long Taco Bell Free Throw Challenge. And of course, you can track that all year at scoringlive.com. Our thanks to Carol Kai Charities, Carol Kai and the Great Aloha Sports Health and Fitness Expo. We were talking about free throw shooting just a few seconds ago. Finley Prep has not necessarily won that challenge here in this uh, classic so far. They're two of six in this game. But Kahuku, the one thing they have done really well, they've gone 11 to 12 for the charity stripe. They've done a great job of getting to the line, especially Josiah Villa, and then capitalizing on those free throws. So, I mean, I'm expecting Kahuku to be one of the highest shooting free throw teams uh, all season. I'm sure they'll be right in the mix for the Scoring Live Free Throw Challenge. Maybe win that $500, $500 for their school. We'll see as we get ready for the second half. You mentioned the Utah Utes. They're here for the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. They went from standing room only near the wall to our right. They're now sitting uh, Kind of in front of us. Going to get a little comfortable before yeah, clear, they start playing. Cleared out just a bit, I think. But uh, I think some people might be coming back in here for the slam dunk contest following this game. I was going to say, it, it could be the concessions. I don't know if the concessions are still open right now. But some might have taken that opportunity to, to grab a bite with the slam dunk competition. Gets them enthralled to end the night. Finley Prep will have it to start the second half. And Kahuku starts out in his own defense. They're trying something different. So they got a different type of zone, a little 1-3-1 one, one look here. Dion back out to Roberts. And that three spins out, but Daniel Fotu can't control the rebound. It's one you want to have, down 25, ball back to the Pilots. I think this is where you use a little bit of that south wind praying step strategy. <laughs> and we get a hold before the inbound. This will go against Kahuku. And it is on Kessie Ahoy. That's his third. With a team this good, you play zone, and you know you're going to have to give up something. And sometimes it's going to be an open look from three. And again, you kind of hope or pray that they miss. That won't miss as Roberts drains the three. I'm guessing they're trying every everything they got in their bag. They may not have worked their one through one very much. but Foul on Washington as Avea went up strong but trying it, you know, trying everything they got to slow down Finley. I should correct myself as Avea with the pass, finding Daniel Fotu. Washington picks up his second foul. It's P.J. Washington and Daniel Fotu coming off a 10.7 rebound performance. 
can't hit his first free throw, just as we were talking about Kahuku's good free throw shooting. Yeah, uh, Fultz is a really great free throw shooter. I don't know that he's missed too many over these last two games. Second one's good, though. It's 45-18. I think at this point, you kind of micromanage the game a little bit if you're Kuhuku. You want to get into mini runs, see what you can kind of bring the game down just a little bit, force Finley Prep to kind of get a little razzled, but not there as P.J. Washington with another basket. But Villa driving, fearless to the rim. It's out of bounds. Last touch by P.J. Washington. Kuhuku will keep it. Kuhuku's just looking for good possessions, you know, whether it be on offense or on defense, trying to make the... Finley Prep Pilots work a little bit and then trying to work for something easy on their end. It'll be Villa who will inbound. As Kahuku gets in position. Villa's really the one ball handler that Kahuku has that can really kind of attack that defense without any fear of any contact. Step back three, no good, but the rebound tapped out. Finley Prep having a hard time controlling it. Now the Pilots do. And Roberts finds an open Reggie Cheney for two underneath. Such a nice job of being patient there. Looked like he had Cheney early, but it would have been a tough pass. Just waited and found him. Ahoy throwing it off the leg of Cheney out of bounds and right back to Kuhuku. <laughs> Coach Washington not backing off his guys despite the 30 point lead. And part of that is knowing that you're not going to get that as that's thrown off that time Donnie Tillman right back to Kuhuku. Now part of that is knowing that you're not going to have that if you're playing tomorrow against Oak Hill. You're not going to have that luxury of a 30-point lead to back off the gas pedal. Yeah, either whether you're up 30 or down 30, especially in the preseason, there's a lot to work on. Do both these teams it's a foul on Dion are expecting to win championships. You know, Kahuku's gonna make a strong run at the Hawaii State Championship, Finley probably at the National Championship, so they're just looking to get better this early in the season, no matter the score. Finley Prep came in to this event, number two in the USA Today Top 25 computer rankings. The latest rankings actually did come out. Finley Prep still at two, Oak Hill at four, as inside, that's good for Daniel Fotu. Nice strong finish there by Fultu. Went up against the big and was able to finish off the glass. The expert rankings in the USA Today Super 25. Oak Hill at 5. Finley at 8. Basically, it's like saying it's a toss-up. That one not, though, is Roberts with yet another 3. Yeah, very few of these teams, especially at the high school level, have common opponents. They go back and play in their leagues, which are so different. Dion stuffs it with two hands. And a near turnover again. Here's a drive by right out of bounds. Off of Finley Prep, so it stays with Kuhuku. Kind of starting to see maybe Kuhuku starting to, to play a little bit differently off this pressure. Yeah, they look like they're just trying to find some open spaces, really pushing it. Lob yep. underneath is not close to Fotu. And again, Finley Prep running. The handoff for Cheney and the slam. And another loose ball that Villa is able to pick up. Trying to split three defenders, he does. Fotu can't hit from distance. Another rebound, P.J. Washington. And shots just not dropping for Kuhuku. That's out of the reach of Tilden. Out of bounds, back to the Red Raiders. Finley gets out in transition so quickly, they keep their spacing. That last one was a four on two for a dunk, but this one they weren't able to get anything. And on the other end, Villa out of the reach of Fotu. And right back to the Pilots. And you can watch Kahuku a little bit. Almost looking like they're a bit winded. This pace is, has now kind of started to get to them outside of just the scoreboard. Dion driving, tough take, that falls. Again, when you see these guys that are 6'9", 6'10", they take three steps and it takes the Kahuku guys or some of these Hawaii teams Maybe about 10 steps, so it's a lot less energy exerted. Fotu cut off at the pass, back out to Ahoy. That's an air ball. And it has gone cold for the Red Raiders. Dion the lob finds Cheney, but back out to P.J. Washington. 
And you bet that will fall as well. And it has gotten a bit out of hand. Brandon Acano wants a timeout. It is 61 to 20 with 419 left in the third quarter. It is a full timeout. Finley Prep started to run away from this one. Up by 41. It's the Iolani Classic on Scoring Live. 419 left to go third quarter. 61-20. Finley Prep with a big lead on Kuhuku. Put yourself in the position of Brandon Akana. He looks like he's got the clipboard out. At this point, you know you're coaching, not necessarily for a game like this, but you're coaching almost looking ahead in a way that you're coaching situational right now. Yeah, I mean, they want to be able to be successful out of the timeout here. Try and test maybe one of the plays that they have against a defense like this, because you know that if it works against them, it's probably going to work against anybody. So a, a good opportunity to see where they are with their sets and what they can do out of a timeout. Villa hands it off to Samuta Avea. Out to Ahoy. Now Fotu double. Villa with 16 to shoot. Tough floating too. It's no good, but nice put back by Fotu at the rim. Nice floater by Villa. Drew the big defender over and it gave Fotu a free look at that offensive board and almost dunk. 61-22. Fidley Prep. Cheney at the baseline. Now skip for Roberts. Cheney getting in and getting the two. So hard to stop those guys. It seems like they don't take bad shots. Kahuku breaks the pressure. Ovea oh, spinning but losing the basketball and up ahead Dion. The rim is his target, and that's a one-hand dunk. A little old to the mailman with the hand behind the head. I'm sensing a preview of the slam dunk competition. Roberts the lob, and Dion is fouled on a push. A little bit of a dangerous play there. Got pushed as he was going up for the alley -oop. That's four on Kessie Ahoy. There have been times where this game has gotten a little physical. We had the, the double technical fouls earlier in the game. Actually, in this timeout, there was a little bit of a, a, a bump between a couple players on the Kuhuku and, and Finley side as both teams are going back to their respective benches in there. You're always taught to make sure that you don't allow the easy basket, and that time, as you said, it was a little more than that. It's, it can tend to be a, a, a bit more dangerous and, and almost something you don't want to see if something, uh, some kind of an injury happens. These guys, they get up so high that any little bump the wrong way on their lower half could turn into something kind of dangerous, but fortunately it worked out all right. Dion hits one of two. 66-22, Finley Prep. They're not letting off the gas. They're still putting full court pressure, blocking foul call against Tillman, and that's three now on Donnie Tillman. Again, funny enough, you know, as we're saying that guys are working on things or these teams are working on things for later in the season, I don't know that they're going to play against a faster guard or shiftier guard than Villa. So good to test their press against Villa. Cody Salval gives it up to Samuta Avea. Kind of a quiet night for Avea. Can't get any space from Cheney. It's taken away. And one more time, Dion to the rim, and he's held. Kahuku's not going to give up any easy ones at this point. That's going to be Daniel Fotu's third. So difficult to get anything on this Finley defense. They do a great job of staying in front. And when you get by the guy in the front, they have a guy in the back. And then they turn it around and go get transition right back. First free throw, good. How's about this night for P.J. Washington? 19 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists, 5 steals. He's really led the charge for Finley Prep tonight. That one good as well. Yeah, Coach Cal got a real nice one. Kahuku running off the miss, off the made basket. That's ripped away by Washington. His sixth steal. Dion with another run out. 70-22. Dion's getting plenty of opportunities to get to the rim. Three ball up, no good from Avea, the rebound to Reggie Cheney. 
Roberts trying to shake by Villa, can't do it. And now Tillman can't contribute as he misses the three. Wright comes up with the rebound. Under two to play, third quarter. Villa running right into Roberts at the baseline. That will be Justin Roberts' third foul. And Finley Prep will go a little deeper into their bench. Sure, this is a bit of a relief for Kahuku to see some of these guys coming out of the game. But what you gotta understand is these guys on Finley Prep, they may not be starters, they may not be heavy minutes guys, but in practice, all day, every day, they're going against these high-level Division I guys, so they're not slouches themselves. Marcus Damuti back in for Kahuku, so is Stenid Lapa. He got the technical earlier. <laughs> that battle with Chris Giles. Salval, not a Fotu. Nice move up and under, and Fotu gets the two. Great right. post move in there by Fotu. It looked like a, a little like his brother Isaac. What speed, Giles and one. Just a blur. Gets the ball up so quickly, but's able to elevate, take a hit, finish lefty over the 6'8 Fotu. By the way, also in the game for Finley Prep, Tadas Karainis, a 6'10 senior. He's wearing number 33 for Finley Prep, member of the uh, under-16 Lithuanian national team. Free throws good, it's now 73-24. Tony Good with the second, also coming in for the first time for Finley Prep. Played in the uh, AAU level at Belmont Shore, some high school basketball in Maryland. He's a 6'5 junior. 1.20 to go third quarter, 73-24, Finley Prep. That's knocked down, Giles to take it away. That's knocked away, he got a, a bit too happy trying to get the assist and up ahead, Fo to the two. Giles was just trying to share. And Karinas underneath, foul. They'll get a lap up. Villa doing what he does there, getting the ball up quick, drawing some attention and dropping it off for Fotu. Two full two for the easy finish there. Alapa now with three fouls. Inbound in. Schweitz three, no good. But he'll be called for the loose ball foul. Ball from the minus number 12, Jack Schweitz. Jack Schweitz called for his first. And a 48.4 here in the third quarter. Reminder coming up after this one. We'll have the slam dunk competition. Kind of let loose a little bit. Give the paying customers a show. It's after the conclusion of this semifinal. Let's hope we have some of these guys participating. Sometimes <laughs> the <laughs> semifinal teams don't want to participate because they know what they have going tomorrow and the energy they exerted tonight. So, Damuni long two. That's short. Rebound goes to Karainis. And Head coach Brandon Akana for Kahuku wanted a foul up ahead. Schweitz gets the lay in. 75 26 with seven seconds left in the third. And a foul as Villa was trying to take it in through the trees. That's the second on Schweitz. Villa is just in tremendous shape. I, I don't know that he's come out of any one of these. Ilani Classic games yet and plays at incredible pace, incredible strength, takes a lot of hits, but he keeps going. Bounce pass into Alapa, two seconds, just throws that one up, no. And that's going to end the third quarter. All Finley prep here in this Ilani Classic semifinal. Pilot 75, Red Raiders 26, the fourth quarter coming up here on Scoring Live. Back for the fourth quarter here at Ilani School, 75-26. It is all Finley Prep tonight over Kahuku. Finley Prep going a little deeper into their into their bench, which we'll get to in a little bit as Kahuku's got the basketball. Down by 49. 
Long three from Josiah Villa, no good. The rebound tap three to Jack Schweitz. I think one of the questions that we were talking about and, and why I'm happy to have a coach working with me is Giles gets the two. I think one of the questions that I would ask you is, you know you've got Oak Hill tomorrow. Oak Hill basically had no time to kind of relax in its game. That's no good. Rebound tap to Fotu. He's fouled. Couldn't relax against Southwind. If you were Coach Paul Washington, are you staying with your reserves for the rest of this fourth quarter? What, how, how do you handle it? I think I do. Stick with the reserves. You know, not only does it give your guys rest for the knockdown drag out game we expect tomorrow against of two highly, highly talented and skilled teams, but it gives guys the chance to play. You know, guys that work really, really hard in practice and gives them the opportunity in front of these big crowds in Hawaii to play in the semifinal of a great tournament. And speaking of that, one of the loudest cheers of the evening for Dylan Glenn Denning coming in for the first time for Finley Premp, the last man off the bench. Glenn Denning can really put it in the hole. Let's see if he gets an opportunity to put up a three. It's going to be Tony Goodwin the second instead. That's no good. Rebound out of bounds. Back to Finley Prep with a fresh 35. 7.06 to go in the fourth quarter. A door off the wall also in a 6 foot 11 sophomore. He wears number 24. He's right there at the high right post right side. He'll throw the inbound and knock down. Taken away by Sal Val. Three on three the other way. Villa to the 10. Got it. So good going to the rack, so strong, able to elevate, get that nice finish at high speed. It is hard to stand out when your team is down 77 to 29, but I think Villa's been able to accomplish that with his gritty and tenacious play. Goodwin's got it. Now the high post, Carinus Snow. Goodwin put back is blocked by Fotu, but there is a whistle. You know, credit to Kahuku, they're not quitting. They came out here to compete from the beginning to the end, no matter the score. They're still pushing their transition, trying to do what they do, getting stops on this end. Their big three still in the game, Villa, Fotu, and Avea. I'm sure they'll be looking to get a little bit of momentum, I guess, rolling into tomorrow's game, which should be tough for them as well. First one's in, it's 78-29. You will hear every time Finley Prep gets the basketball, every time it's in the hands of Dylan Glenn Denning, because that free throw is good, it's 79-29. You will hear the loudest roars of fans yelling to shoot for Glenn Denning. They want him to get in the scores column. As here's a three try, that's an air ball coming from Cody Salvao. And Giles will race ahead. And you can hear some of the fans saying, give it to Dylan. There he is. Short. And it's like the whole place got disappointed. Villa the rebound. PJ Washington had a ESPN highlight dunk. And a foul here. And the Finley Pep fans cannot believe it. And the roar was greater for Dylan Glendening <laughs> to get a foul. Isn't that great? <laughs> well, Dylan Glenn Denning did get into the box score. He committed his first foul. Front end of the 1-1, one one, no good for Villa. And the rebound, too hot the wall. 79-29 with 5.45 to go. Off the wall, backing down. That shot's no good, a rebound to Fotu. Here comes Avea. Running, tough shot, good. Wow, tough finish by Samuta. Able to go to the left and get that one-legged runner with some contact. Six points for Avea. It's been kind of a quiet night for him. 79-31. Finley Prep with 518 remaining. I'm hoping this is a play for Glenn Denning. <laughs> you and about a, several hundred others, I'm sure, there. Off the wall. Into the quarter. Giles three. No. Put back off the wall. No. 
and Villa comes up off the tip, and he's running. And he gets clobbered. Foul on Goodwin. As fearless as he is, the only thing that you worry about is that he doesn't run himself into a situation where he, you can't have him on the floor. Yeah, he plays with such pace. You know, and a lot of these guys are trying to chase him down. Sometimes they can't stop. So you don't want to have a crashing situation where it can turn into something ugly. So we'll see Josiah Villa go back to the free throw line where he missed his last one. 4.56 to go, fourth quarter. Championship game tomorrow night. Eight o'clock tip here at the Iolani Classic. We'll have it for you here on Scoring Live. Oak Hill has punched its ticket. And Finley Prep is four minutes and 56 seconds away from doing the same. Second one no good. And off the wall comes up with the rebound, but his pivot foot shuffled, and he's called for a travel. I tell you, with Dylan Glenn Denning, by the way, being the star of the fourth quarter, that has kept this crowd entertained in, in a game that normally wouldn't and he nearly had a steal that would have gotten this place on its feet. Avea's three, no good. Salval can't save the rebound, and possession will go to Finley Prep. I'm rooting for him at this point. <laughs> Coach got to go into his bag of tricks and find a play for him, I think. At this point, we need an ISO cam on him in the, in the lower corner, like picture in picture, so everybody gets to see Glenn Denning in action. He will not shoot it from the volleyball three-meter line. This might be the most pressure he's ever felt. <laughs> <laughs> he'll shoot it from there, though, and he'll hit. <laughs> that even got the Utah Utes going crazy in front of us. That was a deep one. Now Steph Curry range out there. 82-32, reverse is blocked by Carinus. And a foul called on Daniel Foto is number four. It's like the Utah Utes just saw a ghost. You got guys still standing in disbelief. Iolani's athletic director has to come over and say, hey, guys, that was great, but you got to sit down. Good luck trying to make them sit down after that. Glenn Denning is trying to keep it together there, acting all <laughs> calm and cool. I had to crack a smile when the crowd went crazy for him. It was great. At this point, I think you could also name him Prom King. You could also give him any other award you can find. I don't know if he's going back to Vegas. <laughs> Three ball away is no good. Put back good, though, from Daniel Fotu. At this point, everybody's just going to want to see him shoot every shot that's left. This has become the Dylan Glenn Denning show. And we're all just living in it. <laughs> Carinus with it. Back to Glenn Denning. Gets away from the defender. Goodwin can't hit the three. And we'll get a foul underneath. This has become the most fun atmosphere we have had in either of these two semifinals. And we got three minutes and 20 more <laughs> seconds of Dylan Glendening. I can't imagine the booze if coach decides to take him out again. Oh. Dare he try. Ethan Erickson will make his first appearance for Kahuku, a six foot four sophomore. As the door off the wall, shooting, no good at the free throw line. Rebound, Marcus DeMooney. 3.15 left to go. Josiah Villa still in there in an 82-34 game. Villa gets inside the arc. Demuti corner three. Good. Another, you gotta feel good there. Yeah, another great pass by Villa. You know, always seems to make the right play. Attacks it hard, found the kick, and Demuti hit a nice three. Baseline step on Goodwin. Or they're going to get a foul? No, it's going to be baseline out of bounds to Kahuku. <laughs> Even some of the Utah guys, as, as Finley Prep's coming back down the floor, the Utah guys are like, hey, baseline and kick. 
You gotta know who's open. Yeah, floor recognition's on point even though they're not playing. Skip past the near side, Salval. And Erickson. Dumps it into Fotu, got away with a walk. And now underneath, nice hesitation, Damuni. His two will fall. Nice finish there by Damuni. 82-39. 2.25 left to play. Finley Prep just a couple minutes away. From setting it eight for tomorrow night with Oak Hill. Schweitz, no good. A little, a boo, a little booing from the crowd. <laughs> Tough customers tonight. Three ball for Erickson is good from the left corner. Sophomore at six foot four with a contested triple, and it's 82-42. Shot that with confidence and was able to knock that down even with a hand in his face. That was a nice stroke. Let's see how Finley Prep runs this possession. Long three, Giles no good. And we'll get this one knocked out of bounds. It's gonna be a foul, looks like, against Schweitz. His third. Now we'll send Kahuku to the free throw line with 1.33 left to go. If you're Brandon Akano, what do you take away from a game like this? I think they're, they're able to find some spots of success, you know. And in a game like this, you're just trying to look for little, little flashes and say, hey, you know, we were, able to, we were able to break a press by one of the longest teams they'll ever face. We, we were able to get some buckets here and there against a great team, you know, and, and pull that out later in the season, maybe when they're playing in the OIA or possibly in the state tournament, just to remind them of what they're capable of if they play at the highest level and execute well. 122 remaining, 82-43. Glenn Denning. This has become a show. Glenn Denning with two threes. Villa can't hit that. Rebound to Fotu, he's blocked underneath. Third chance, Erickson no. And it's out of bounds, it will stay with Kahuku. Glenn Denning with the pump fake. Step back, <laughs> off the backboard, triple. Can you script that? I, you know, it's just going for him. He's just missing that little, little Steph Curry shimmy, I think. <laughs> He'll get that. I think He's if he hits another one, we might see it. Erickson, partially tipped by Glenn Denning. Now Demuti underneath, back out. Fotu fakes the three, pull up two. No good, 35 seconds to go. And you know who the fans want to see shoot it one more time. Not him, <laughs> but Goodwin gets the two to go. What is he doing? <laughs> he could have easily kicked it to the corner. <laughs> that's, that's floor recognition right there. 15 seconds to go, 87-43. Finley Prep will take on Oak Hill tomorrow night at eight for the Iolani Classic title. Six seconds, up ahead, Giles. He will not hit the dunk. Ball goes out of bounds, there's point three. And it will go to Kahuku. <laughs> and some of the fans will be left disappointed that Glenn Denning won't get an opportunity for a third three. But they won't be disappointed that Finley Prep is going back to the Iolani Classic title game looking for its second Iolani Classic championship. Final score, 87-43 over Kahuku. Put into words how Finley Prep dominated from start to finish. They just took what was given to them. They didn't overdo it, they didn't force. If it was a dunk, it was a dunk. If it was a three, it was a three. If it was an offensive board, they went out and got that. They got in transition when Kuku was a little slow to get back. They were long on defense. They maybe gave on the first level, but got stops in the second level. They did it every which way on both ends, and that's how you want to get a W. That's how you want to roll into a championship game against two top five teams. 
Oak Hill and Finley Prep tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. We're going to step away for a few moments, and when we come back, it's a slam dunk competition. So the paying customers will get a show. That's coming up after this. It is the Iolani Classic here on Scoring Live. 